You are listening to the New Book of Daniel podcast. Hello and welcome to the New Book of Daniel podcast. My name is Daniel Bobinski. I'll be your host on this adventure. Today we have with us a special guest, Representative Judy Boyle. Uh, Judy Boyle is with Idaho's District Number 9. Uh, before that, uh, she was a Natural Resources Director for Congresswoman Helen Chenoweth. And Representative Boyle has also been named one of the 100 most influential people in the state of Idaho. Uh, she's been in the legislator for uh, six terms since 2008. And so she kind of knows her way around. Uh, the reason that I asked her to be on the show is one of the counties in her district, Adams County, uh, recently declared itself to be free of all COVID restrictions and open for business. And so uh, what you're about to hear is uh, just a snippet of this conversation that I had with her. Uh, we had a lot of different topics that we talked about. So I'm just gonna let you listen in on one of those snippets. If you'd like to listen to the entire conversation, I will put a link in the show notes down below so you can listen to the entire conversation. But for right now, let's listen to what uh, Representative Boyle has to say. Um, so you're Ooh. a representative for a specific district. Uh, when you receive a letter from somebody outside your district, how does that resonate with you? What do you do with that? Well, it depends on the time of year. Um, like this time of year, I tried to respond to all the email because you, you're not receiving hundreds every single day like you are during session. During session, it can be 600 emails easy on one issue, just one issue a day. And a lot of those are generated through um, national groups that just send out, you know, fill in the blank here of your legislator's name and we'll send that off. But then they send it to everybody. And so when we're in session, I mean, we have no staff whatsoever. It's just us. And we are definitely overwhelmed. There's no doubt about this. You know, you're answering your own phone calls, your own email. You're going to three committee meetings. You're on the floor. You're trying to work on legislation. You're sleeping about five hours a day maximum and probably eating one meal. So you're a little bit overwhelmed if you are intent on doing a good job. So what I always do is I scan, okay, do I recognize this name? No, I don't. Then I look to the bottom to see where are they from? Well, if they just put their name, I don't know, they could be from California. They could be from anywhere. So I'm probably not going to answer it because I have a limited amount of time to do so. So it's important that people put down the district or the town that they reside in so that that legislator knows, okay, this is someone I'm representing so I can take the time to respond to them. And then also, you know, please um, be, be cognizant that legislators are overwhelmed and when you're getting 600 emails a day, you're gonna miss some. There's no doubt whatsoever you're going to miss some. Or if you're getting 100 phone calls a day, there's no way you can listen to every single one and respond back. So when someone writes you, you're, you're a state representative, um, what gets your attention? Uh, are they from my district first? You know, a second is a priority. Are they having a pro an immediate problem with a state or federal agency? And I always because I worked for Helen, I understand the federal system and who you go to. So if they're having an immediate problem with a bureaucrat or a bura you know, an agency, that has to be my number one priority over everything. If you're just writing to complain about something, that's not a priority. If you are having a major problem, let's say you can't get your social security check for some reason, or you're trying to get a septic tank approved so your family can move into their brand new house and you can't get this guy from the district health to come out and inspect. That's an immediate problem. You're just calling to say, I think you're a jerk. That's not an immediate problem. It might be for you, but it isn't for me. So a lot of think, uh, I think a lot of folks will write you during the legislative session to support or to not support a bill. Um, when people write along those lines, what kind of letter, 
gets your attention. I'm going to assume, uh, because some people think more information is better, um, <laughs> that you're not going to want to read a, you know, a six-page letter explaining everything, although people want to just vent so they write a six-page letter or a three-page or even a two-page letter. You probably don't have time for that. Um, what, so what would you want to see if someone's trying to write you in support or uh, to, uh, to push against a certain legislative bill? Okay, first I want to know they've actually read and understand the bill, that this isn't just a organization saying, write your legislature and oppose this bill, and the citizen has no idea what the bill even is. We get that a lot. And a, too much of the time, it's exactly opposite of what the bill is. So I want to know that you understand the bill. That's vital. You're telling me not to vote for this bill that you haven't read, that you don't understand, that I have read and I do understand, or you're telling me to vote for this bill that I know is unconstitutional. That's not going to happen. So do your homework is what I'm saying. And if you want to write a six page letter of this is the reasons why I don't like this bill, you know, on page one, it says this and page two, it contradicts what's in page three. I know you've read that bill. I know you understand it. So those kind of emails, in my mind, account for a lot more than somebody that just signs a form letter saying oppose this bill. So if, if someone does write you a five or six page letter, you're saying that you will consider it if it is someone who has read the bill and is showing intellect about the content. Absolutely. Because then I know you've done your job as a citizen and you've become engaged enough to actually have read it so you understand why you are opposing it or supporting it. Not just because you heard this somewhere that this is a terrible bill, so write to your Congress or your legislator mm -hmm. and tell them to oppose it. And people also need to remember, this is not a democracy. This is a representative republic, meaning you need to vet your people you vote for to understand where are their principles. Are their principles in line with you? Do they care about the Constitution? Do they know the Constitution? Are their principles with mine? Then yes, I want that person to represent me and I trust they will vote like I do to uphold those principles. And if I see a bill and I read it and I think, oh my gosh, this thing's terrible then as a citizen, I should write or call my legislator and say, um, I just saw this bill and I know you're not on that committee. So if you're not on that committee, that means the legislator has not heard all the pros and cons that have been in that committee. All you see is when it comes on the floor. And so as a constituent, you can say, I was in the committee meeting or I listened to the committee meeting or I see this in the bill that's really bad and would harm people. And so I, I hope that you would vote against it. So then that makes me go, okay, they understand this. They paid attention to it. I'm not in that committee. And so I'll read very carefully what they've written, what the bill says. And then I will also go to someone I trust that's on that committee and ask them questions about that bill so that I thoroughly understand what it is. And that was just a snippet of a nice conversation I had with Representative Judy Boyle from Idaho's District Number 9. If you would like to listen to the entire interview, uh, the link to that is in the show notes down below. If you would like to contact me for any reason, you can do that by sending an email to newbookofdaniel at outlook.com. That's newbookofdaniel at outlook.com. Of course, if you want to leave a note down below in the comments section, feel free to do that as well. Uh, you can also find me online on the social media platforms, Twitter and Parler and MeWe. I'll just look up the new book of Daniel, just new book of Daniel. And of course, Facebook as well, facebook.com slash new book of Daniel. If you would like to follow my writings, uh, what I have to say about politics and the issues of the day, you can do that by visiting uh, a red state and also uncoverdc.com. Um, I do ask you to subscribe to the show. 
go ahead and click that red subscribe button. Click that bell so you get notified when we put up new podcasts. Uh, you have been listening to the New Book of Daniel podcast. My name is Daniel Bobinski. I thank you very much for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next show. And until next time, be blessed. <laughs>